in, in the last portion of our discussion today, I'd like to return to an issue that I introduced earlier, and that is intrapatient uh, tumor heterogeneity, and, and ask some questions that all practicing oncologists have to face in their, in their practice. There may not necessarily be a right or wrong answer, but I'd like your opinions on these, and I'd like to start with Alan and ask, um, is the molecular profile in a primary lung cancer the same as in its metastasis? So first off, I'd like to say that I, I really like the questions where there's no right or wrong answer. So that uh, takes the pressure off. Um, so I, I think, um, well, we, we all know that there, the, the topic of heterogeneity has uh, is, is come more into play with the New England Journal of Medicine um, article that sort of defined what we already knew to some degree. I mean, we've all had patients who, you know, the tumor... Um, has responded in some areas, not in other areas, and, and, and whatnot. So I think that clearly confirms that. Um, and the issues are that there are differences between the primary and the metastatic. Uh, there's differences within the tumor itself, each individual tumor, uh, in terms of heterogeneity and you know uh, sticking it with a needle uh, and getting a small component of it, you get different results. So the question uh, is now, um, I certainly agree that there are differences but how we're going to attack that um, and use that to guide treatment is, is going to be uh, interesting as we go, as we go forward. Um, because as I understand it, it's somewhere in the range of around 20 to 25% differences. And it, can be, it can be more with some that have, have already have a mutation and they've received treatment. So um, I'll sort of leave it at that. I'm sure everybody else is sort of chomping at the bit to, uh, to give their perspective as well. But. Are there uh, other comments? Well, I think uh, you tend not to lose the mutations, although, as you point out, uh, in ALK, uh, sometimes you're not able to identify the translocation later on. But at least with EGFR uh, mutations, that same mutation will come up, but you will find resistance mutations. And I think that's one component of the heterogeneity. It's not so much heterogeneity, but an evolution, uh, malignant, uh, further malignant transformation over time. I think we readily recognize that many of these cancers have multiple clones, and we're not terribly surprised when we find different uh, patterns uh, that exist within ostensibly the same specimen. Well, let me ask Dr. So a follow-up question then, and that would be, we talked about rebiopsy earlier. <clears throat> if you had a patient, let's say, with an ALK fusion cancer, and they've responded to crizotinib, and now they have progressive disease, <laughs> Is it okay to go back and biopsy the primary cancer if it's intact, or should you grow, should you actually biopsy a growing metastatic lesion? Yeah, I routinely go after the growing metastatic lesion because that's where your clonal differentiation is going to be, and that's where you're going to get the most information. So that's usually what I would do, both for the EGFR mutations population, because you're looking for T790, because that can alter your treatment completely. Um, and I would do that as well now in my, in my uh, ALK patients. So far, luckily, my ALK patients are all been controlled on crizotinib, so I haven't had to deal with that issue yet. So, um, but eventually, I'm sure it'll You're come lucky. up. Yeah. Yeah. Mark <laughs> mentioned the Colorado data on ALK fusion earlier, and I think, to me, they, ha they probably have the best database to suggest to look for loss of ALK fusion and identification of a new driver that maybe biopsying this growing metastatic lesion would be the best place to go. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I think this, um, you know, the, we talk about models that uh, improve our understanding of the biology of cancers. The ALK uh, is evolving into that. Uh, you know, you, you, you lose ALK, you have point mutations that are different, then you have the emergence of other clones. So the resistance is quite heterogeneous. And unless you rebiopsy, you don't really know what, really what's know going on. really know that. Yeah. I was frankly, very surprised when they presented that data and they actually identified EGFR and KRAS mutations in that population. That yeah, because we're taught, I mean, I mean, you know, the word on the street is these are mutually exclusive. Uh, they're not. Um, and, and then, you know, one of the questions that remains is, were these there at the start and just undetected and then emerged over time? Um, hard to know yet. We, we, th this is obviously a fascinating area of lung cancer biology that we're just beginning to kind of see the first scene of, if you will. But it would um, radically alter the therapy. That a we absolutely, yeah, patients. absolutely. I think um, this may be just briefly a, a comment here, and we can ask opinions. Um, Anne mentioned that these are things that evolved. They weren't there in the beginning. 
But now that we have much more sensitive techniques, an example would be scorpion technology to detect mutations. In fact, T790M is present and maybe up to a third of patients with activating mutations in their cancer. And so there could be two scenarios. One might be that there wasn't the second driver there in the beginning and it developed under the influence of therapy. And the, the other possibility would be that it was there, but it was a less fit clone and a minority and you couldn't identify it by standard techniques, but if the techniques are sensitive enough, mm -hmm. that could actually help us then develop paradigms where we use combinations up front mm -hmm. to try to address what's going to be the next driver of the bus. Do people, what do people think about that? Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think your point is uh, spot on. I mean, I think this is, as we get more sensitive and understand the initial biology of the tumor, you know, the paradigm in oncology has been to use uh, kind of non-cross-resistant -re combinations. Um, you know, our elders taught us that many years ago, and I think uh, there's no reason to believe why that still isn't true uh, as we kind of define the molecular heterogeneity of the populations.